Fasting has the potential to improve kidney disease. Oh, that's amazing! It's not even the best part. Showed that fasting could help reverse established diabetic kidney disease, the glomerular diseases, and polycystic kidney disease. Oh, incredible! Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today we talk about Dr. Jason Fang's last video. Dr. Jason Fang is a nephrologist and a pioneer of intermittent fasting and he seems to genuinely believe that to improve your kidney function, what you need is... Drum roll please! Fasting! And he's not just recommending fasting to patients with diabetic kidney disease or those who are overweight. He is even recommending it to those with polycystic kidney disease and glomerular diseases. You know, conditions like IgA nephropathy, lupus nephritis, FSGS, and other forms of glomerulosclerosis. These forms of kidney disease progress incredibly fast and are notoriously hard to treat. I hate them. So... Is fasting the miracle treatment we need? In 2022, there was very exciting research that showed, for really the first time that I had seen, a human study that showed that fasting could help reverse established diabetic kidney disease. So, this is actually very interesting. The study he mentioned was published in 2022 in the Journal of the Endocrine Society. It was a small study on 40 diabetes patients with proteinuria. They found that with a diet called a fasting mimicking diet, some patients achieved a very significant improvement in their proteinuria levels. Dr. Fang talks about reversing diabetic kidney disease here, and he is not wrong here. In fact, as we can see, ACR decreased by minus 30.3 milligrams per grams on average in patients with microalbuminuria, but not in those with macroalbuminuria. I'm hoping you can tell me what this means. Now, guys. When we talk about albuminuria, it basically means proteinuria. This is a marker of kidney health that's just as important as GFR and creatinine, especially in people with diabetes and those with glomerular diseases. So what this study found out is that if your kidneys are just slightly under the weather, maybe a diet that mimics fasting helps. But if they're throwing a full-blown tantrum, you're out of luck. Now, this is very encouraging, but please wait a minute before throwing your morning oats out of the window because there is more. Both at the same time. What they did in this study here is very, very interesting because they took a uh, rat to start with. They compared these rats that were just given whatever they want with a low salt fasting mimicking diet. And what you can see is when they measured the urine protein to creatinine ratio, you immediately started to see a benefit in those rats. Okay, so yet another study to support the use of fasting in senior patients, but this one was done on rats. <sighs> um, very interesting. Sorry. So, if I'll ever have a rat with puromyosin-induced nephropathy, now I know what kind of food to give him. Great. Wow. Anyway, in order to support the use of fasting in CKD patients, Dr. Fang goes on in his video talking about more rat studies and stuff such as mTOR, autophagy, and so forth. Don't worry, I'll spare you the details because I know many of you have kidney disease and I don't want to add narcolepsy to your medical records. Not worth the insurance premium, trust me studies so that's not that interesting really thank you dr fang i couldn't have said it better myself now guys if you still fell asleep even if i skip the boring part here's a recap dr fang recently made a video about studies that according to him support the use of fasting in people with kidney disease fasting could help reverse established diabetic kidney disease so, we have these studies that supposedly back fasting for CKD. Uh, but 
Here is the twist. Not one of these studies is actually about true fasting, not even the ones on rats. They're all about diets that mimic fasting. Oh, it looks like you will still have to eat tomorrow, guys. What a bummer. And guys, I get it. Fasting sounds like a lot of fun, really. I mean, imagine all the time you've saved by, you know, not eating and all the exciting activities you could do. Like, for example, wondering how on earth you'll take your pills without food. Anyway, Dr. Fang says that fasting helps the kidneys, but I am, however, of a completely different opinion. What I will show you today is that people with kidney disease should never, ever fast. The rats. Why, you ask? Because it's dangerous. This is why we'll examine the studies he mentioned in depth and not just to debunk all his fasting hogwash, but also to give you actionable info to actually improve your kidney function. Yeah, I like to do things in a different way here from Dr. Fung. Because I mean, I don't really need to find studies to support some weird theories. Because what I believe in is something called low-protein plant-based diet. And the low-protein diet for CKD is already backed by so many studies that it's conventional medicine nowadays. Yeah, that's how you know stuff. Because after a while, even your primary care doctor tells you that, yeah, maybe you should avoid protein if you have kidney disease. Anyway, my prediction here is that fasting will never become part of the conventional treatment for kidney disease. Let's debunk Dr. Fang theory using the exact same study he used to support it. And I mean the study on actual humans. Because I don't think there are any rats in my audience. The rats. I mean, unless you work at McDonald's. Huh? <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the study. As we have already seen, the fasting mimicking diet reduced proteinuria in the participants compared to the control group. And none of those participants were rats. They would have never snitched anyone out. I checked. They were real people. And those real people actually improved. What's wrong with this study, you ask? Well, just a couple of things. First of all, as we can see, there are two groups of people here. Treatment group who received the fasting mimicking diet or FMD and the control group. Now, the control group kept their previous diet, no change in their diet at all. So, as control group, they used CKD patients that were following their standard old diet. But the treatment group was on a diet that was plant-based and low in protein. Actually, very low in protein. So, what did we prove here? That a low-protein, plant-based diet lowers protein in CKD? Yeah, we already knew that. And guys, I'm not saying that this study is not interesting, but it absolutely does not support the use of intermittent fasting in CKD patients. Rats. None of these patients was fasting. They just reduced their caloric intake and most importantly, their protein intake. I mean, yeah, of course, that was gonna work. Why haven't they tested this innovative diet of theirs against a control group following a low-protein plant-based diet as well? Doesn't that sound like cheating? Now, guys, I will always warn you about internet misinformation and Dr. Funks in particular has some very weird theories. For example, he says calories in, calories out, Chico doesn't work for weight loss. This calories in, calories out model doesn't work at all. I mean, guys, in 2024, most of the scientific community considers Chico deniers about as credible as moon landing deniers and flat earthers. Telling people that calorie counting doesn't work is like claiming Newton was wrong and gravity is a government conspiracy to keep apples on the ground. But that's not even my biggest problem with him. My problem with him is that he is the type of guy to pull all of his eggs in a basket. This basket being intermittent fasting. You see the name of his website? Yeah, 
This is risky in medicine because now he's got a solution in search of problems rather than a problem in search of solutions. Sure, this approach is best when it comes to selling courses or books, but what about the patients? What if this solution is dangerous for some of them? This is why I want you to listen to him with a big grain of salt. I used to say a grain of salt as big as those blocks of salt they give cows to lick, but that was for Dr. Berg, I think. So yeah, maybe not that big. Dr. Fung generally knows what he is talking about. Some of his advice are actually solid. So maybe find a slightly smaller block of salt when you listen to him. Yeah, like that one. That's perfect. Now guys, you may ask, Dr. Fung says to fast, you say not to. Why? Should we trust you and not him? Well, because we do things a bit differently, me and him. He mainly sells online courses and books about, you guess it, fasting. But I don't have a product to sell here. The only thing I offer are my consultations, which means that some of my viewers are also my patients. And that's something important if you think about it, because trust me, when I say that, it's a lot easier for me to work with a patient that tells me, hey, Catherine, I'm doing what you say in your videos and I'm improving my kidney function already, rather than with a patient that tells me, hey, I'm doing what you told everyone to do and now my doc says that I'm an alien because there is not a single value in my labs that's in range. I mean, I would be like, rats. So yeah, that's why I usually give you, you know, the right advice here. And guys, you know, I have nothing against fasting in general. I mean, I was doing intermittent fasting for a while. When was that? Three or four years ago? Yeah, when intermittent fasting was still popular and I lost some weight with it. So I have definitely nothing against, you know, people doing fasting unless, you know, you have diabetes or kidney disease, of course, or God forbid, a combination of both. In fact, I'm glad that today, not a lot of people are fasting anymore. Listen, let me tell you a story. I had a patient with stage 3 ACKD and just below normal kidney function and metabolic acidosis that was really hard to explain. No hyperphosphatemia, no hyperkalemia, no uncontrolled diabetes. He was not even following a diet that was too bad, actually. He wasn't eating meat every day. What was causing metabolic acidosis? Turns out this patient was fasting every day and for long periods of time. No, he wasn't losing weight, but hey, at least his kidneys were being repaired, you know, from all that fasting. But they were not. They were suffering. Yeah, because of all that fasting. You see, when you fast for a long time without eating or drinking, your body runs out of the usual energy it gets from food. To keep going, it starts breaking down fat for energy. This process produces substances called ketones. There's a problem with that. It's that ketones are acidic. Normally, the body can handle a little bit of this acid, but if you're fasting regularly, you may produce too many ketones and your body can't get rid of the acids fast enough. This can cause metabolic acidosis, which is a cause for kidney damage. And this patient didn't even have diabetes or advanced kidney disease. It would have been a lot worse in that case. Anyway, I told him to you know, stop fasting and I started him on a low protein plant-based diet because in my opinion, from the lab reports of that patient, it was 100% clear that fasting was causing kidney damage. And you want to know if my approach worked? If telling this patient to avoid fasting was enough to decrease the acid in their body? Well, I don't know. Yes, his metabolic acidosis improved, but his GFR and proteinuria levels improved as well because I started him on a low protein diet and I gave him sodium bicarbonate. So we will never know if he improved his metabolic acidosis because he stopped fasting or because of the bicarbonate or if it was for the new diet. But hey, that was a real person, you know, not a rat. And I only cared about getting him to improve. 
In any case, there are no studies done on kidney patients with actual fasting nowadays. It's too dangerous and no one would want to, you know, have to explain to an ethic committee why half their participants came out of the study looking like they wrestled with a grizzly bear. Very exciting research that showed for really the first time that I had seen a human study that showed that fasting could help reverse established diabetic kidney disease. You can see this in this previous video that I did, but briefly, a six month course of a fasting mimicking diet. And now you know why researchers are going out of their way to create fast mimicking diets to test on kidney patients. Yeah, it could be a lot easier to just, you know, get these patients to do some fasting. But how would you explain the fact that these patients came in with clear labs and ended your trial with half of their lab values completely out of whack? So yeah, that's why fasting definitely does not work for CKD. It's debunked. In any case, if you want to see me making fun of more doctors and researchers, why not take a look at the video in which I found out that the most vocal deniers of the low protein diet were on the payroll of AstraZeneca and <clears throat> the Vita Nonit list. It's up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye bye.